Hey guys, and welcome to a uh, another episode of Conversations of Faith. This is episode uh, number five in our um, you know Conversations of Fire of Faith series. Um, and this is just something for those of you tuning in uh, for the first time. Um, this is something that originally was just developed with the idea um, that um, lots of people within our church, within our congregation, our church family were um, having to uh, or choosing to um, isolate, to stay at home um, due to the COVID-19 global pandemic. Um, so we decided that um, to help stay connected, to help stay uh, family to ensure that everybody keeps, um, you know, um, engaged. We wanted to uh, put out uh, the, this online um, ministry uh, just to connect. And, and um, I, I do really want to uh, probably um, make sure that everybody's aware that this is a uh, supplementary. This should by no means. Um, be something that we do instead of gathering together uh, for the purpose of celebrating God and worshiping God. Um, this was created for the sole purpose of for those who can't in for a season to still stay connected um, and together. And we decided just to carry this on. We're going to carry it on. We decided to open it up and make it a bit broader in terms of make it available to other people. Originally. Um, in the first couple of episodes, we only made it uh, sort of accessible to um, to people who we sent the link to. Um, but the feedback came that it might be beneficial for uh, a broader viewing base. So uh, we've opened it up. Um, so thank you for being part of part of this conversation. Thank you for being uh, part of what we're doing, and thank you for. Uh, being interested in uh, the Word of God and exploring that a little bit more. It's kind of an exciting thing. So uh, it's very cool to be with you this morning. Um, we uh, gather on a Sunday morning uh, in the auditorium, in the sanctuary, uh, together corporately. But I also want to gather with uh, individuals in their homes who can't come in or who are working away or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, and, and I don't want anybody to miss out. So um, that's what this is for. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Aaron and uh, I'm part of the team at Champion Lakes Christian Church in Armidale, Perth, Western Australia. We are in April 2022. Uh, no, we're in May. It's the 1st of May, May 2022. And again, I've said it before, but this year is just uh, singing past. It is going fast. Uh, we have had an exciting time. Um, over the last um, little while with uh, Easter weekend celebration was amazing watching people baptized lives transformed um, you know last weekend was an incredible weekend as well um, it's really a joy uh, to get to be involved with what God is doing within our city and through this church um, and if you haven't been out to uh, to the church, then we'd love to see you sometime. Come and join us on a on a Sunday or uh, on the first Wednesday night of each month. We have a uh, an all in prayer meeting that you're welcome to join as well. Um, but essentially, what we do is we gather together uh, like this. We uh, you know look for a few devotions and, and read through the scriptures and just explore a little bit. It's a, a kind of a casual kind of format but it really is just uh, an opportunity for you and me to sit together to read a little bit uh, and to talk about what um, what God's saying and how he's speaking and my hope is that it spurs uh, both of us one another spurs us all on uh, to get excited about scripture excited about our relationship with God uh, and to really dive in and peel open the layers um, of our faith uh, to learn who who God is for us, who God is for all of us, um, you know, and who God is for uh, in our lives individually, corporately, and globally um, is the plan. One of the things we we do uh, is we read through um, the um, 
a, a little daily devotion called Our Daily Bread. Uh, we don't have any particular official affiliation with uh, the makers of this. It's just a easy to read uh, daily devotion. And uh, we do this as an encouragement um, for people to get into the, um, the habit of um, reading uh, God's word every day, um, but also spending some time in prayer. Um, so we start with that. And then uh, we've been actually um, combing through um, 1 Corinthians in the Bible. Uh, we're not very far through it. It's taken a little while. And I think that's cool. Like I said last week, we're not in any particular rush. Um, we just want to spend time in the word and grow and learn and, um, and celebrate uh, with one another. So before we get started for this week, um, let's pray together, shall we? I think it's always beneficial for us to pray. So, uh, so let's do that. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're grateful for this opportunity to uh, come together, uh, to um, learn more about you, to grow closer to you, Lord. Just pray that you bless this time together for all of those who are, um, who are at home and, and watching in or in their car, on their phone, watching in, hopefully not driving at the same time. But anybody in any space who's tuning in right now, Lord, I just pray that um, we connect with you on a really deep level this morning. Uh, we pray, Lord, that although um, we would be preferring to meet in person, Lord, we know that you are uh, incredibly powerful and that Holy Spirit can uh, infiltrate any arena and, and, and transform life. So do that today, Lord. Do that through this. Do that right now in me and in each person watching, Lord. Uh, just start to um, impact our hearts and our minds, uh, transform our thinking, Lord. We choose to give you our attention. We choose um, to to focus upon you this morning. Um, and we do it with expectant hearts that something's going to transpire here this morning. So, Lord, have your way. Lord, this is about you, to celebrate you and honour you, so be glorified. And Lord, I pray over every person, Lord, uh, that's tuning in, uh, that there is a, a blessing in their midst, Lord, that there is a contact with you, that there's a newness about their relationship with you, that there might be something that impacts them deeply um, through this time, and that it's not just words spoken by a man, uh, but it is... Um, word and spirit put in and through me, Lord, but your word, your power and your strength, Lord. Uh, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm kind of like a little bit um, excited about this this kind of reading because it's quite fascinating how like God just aligns things and puts it together. Um, I don't kind of go through and um, pre- um, pre-read our devotion uh, for, that we sort of step into um i read it with you guys because um i enjoy it right so um we just catch this is a, a daily devotion so there's a date for every day and a reading for every day um and i just jump in on the day that we're on um to share between us right so um today being uh sunday the first of may 2022 um and you'll see why i find this quite interesting and how god likes to connect things together um because uh this particular reading is entitled let there be light um and you'll see when we jump into uh first corinthians in a little while or why that's a little bit interesting um but turn with me, if you will, to the very front, very front of your Bible, into uh, the book of Genesis. It is the beginning, the very beginning, and uh, we're actually going to read from the very beginning. Our um, our daily bread tells us uh, Genesis one, verses one to five, is the reading. So if you can just jump there, if you haven't already, if you could, that'd be great. Genesis one, and we're going to read from verses one to five. Read along. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning. And that was the first day. Then if we uh, jump in 
to our reading here, let there be light in our uh, daily bread here. So it says, <clears throat> so these give a little bit of synopsis for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, why well, I don't have one of these, you can get a, a di free digital app uh, and get the daily reading every day on your phone or your device as well. Um, so this will give us a, a little reading, something to, to read, um, the scripture which we just read, and then it will give a little story, a little object illustration of it, and a little prayer. Um, and I just think it's um, a good practice. So this one, let there be light. Um, it's talking about a story. So uh, this guy's telling us that in his, uh, in his, in uh, their their child's earliest days, in their daughter's earliest days, um, they often name things that she encountered. So their daughter, when they were really little, uh, would be exploring and um, go out and name the things that ever they picked up or came across and identify um, the objects that their daughter was touching, the things that they were unfamiliar with, and they would say the word, right, to help grow the child's vocabulary or to help um, them learn what it is. So, for example, the child might grab a water bottle like this and um, they'd go, water, water, you know, you know what I'm saying. Um, and this helped this child explore. Now, they had hoped that the child's first words might be, uh, you know, mum or dad. Um, but they were surprised when the child's words were totally different. They um, tell us how the child murmured, dite, one day, which was a mispronunciation of the word light. The father had been uh, trying to demonstrate light to the child and the child turned around and said, dight instead of light. This goes on to tell us that light is one of God's first words recorded in the Bible, which we just read. And as the Spirit of God hovered over a dark, formless and empty earth, God introduced light into his creation, saying, let there be light. He said the light was good which the rest of scripture bears out, it, it explains it. And then the psalmist explains that God's words illuminate our understanding in Psalm 119. And Jesus refers to himself as the light of the world, the giver of the light of life, it says in John. See, God's first utterance in the work of creation was to give light. That wasn't because he needed light to do his work. No, the light was for us, for you and for me. See, light enables us to see him and identify his fingerprint on all creation, to discern what is good from what's not good and to follow Jesus one step at a time in this vast world. God said, let there be light. What area of your life do you most need God's light to shine right now? We all have things in our life. We're looking for direction. We're looking for breakthrough. We're looking for healing. We're looking for help. Where do you need help right now? Where do you need God to shine his light? And then think back to how has God and his light, his love, his guidance blessed you in the past. He's a good God. He's faithful. And he wants to, no matter what you're going through, no matter what season you're in, uh, he wants to drench you in his light. He wants you to bask in his light. This prayer for today says, Thank you, Jesus, for being the light of life who illuminates my path every day. It's almost a declaration. Thank you, Lord, that you illuminate our path every day. In Jesus' name, amen. So good, so good. Um, as I spoke briefly before, for those um, who have been joining week after week, good to see you again, good to hang out. We're going to continue in 1 Corinthians. And for those of you who are uh, coming in for the first time, welcome. Um, and if you can turn with us to uh, 1 Corinthians, um, we've kind of been exploring a little bit about what it's talking about and, and what's happening in this book. And it's um, we explored about how Paul had kind of gone there and, and 
um, hung out with um, some people who, uh, so his previous profession was tent making and rather than just going in and expecting everybody else to look after him and, and so on and so forth, he actually went and stayed with some fellow tent makers and worked. So he'd work during the week and then he had made some friends in the local um, in the local synagogue and um, was able to get platform on the weekend and he would go and um, read scriptures and share the gospel um, on the weekend. Um, and over time, we saw that he um, gained some traction there. Over about the course of a year, uh, he got a bit of traction. Um, uh, a few people got saved. In fact, the leader of the particular synagogue there got, um, got and his family got radically saved, uh, which is really cool. Um, an interesting um, little thing about this is that um, Paul, it reads as though Paul stayed in that area in Corinth for about 18 months or so, um, which was pretty long, like compared to most other places. So if you follow the little bit of um, Paul's journey, um, he kind of went to places sort of help establish and plan a church and then he like moved on. Um, but here he stayed for a while and it seems as though he kind of started with a little bit of hesitation. Um, and the, the, the story kind of tells us that. So we've sort of gone through and talked about that in chapters one and two. And like I said, we're moving quite slowly through because it's so fascinating. It's so interesting. It's um, a really uh, cool, um, well, we call it a book, but really it's a letter, right? So Paul's addressing a church that, um, I'm sad to say, but really does resemble and, and um, kind of look like the modern day style church there's all sorts of issues this letter he's had report he's now in ephesus he's had report about what's going on in a church that he established and spent time in all that time those 18 months and sort of setting a foundation and then um, he's getting this report of things going wrong and he's addressing these things that are going wrong uh, all sorts of amazing things um, so it's an interesting letter uh, and I think we need to approach it from that perspective. We sometimes read it as if it's just a story. Um, and so when it's a story, there's no real connection to it. It might be entertaining, but it's not like doesn't hit us. But this is a letter to the church um, uh, from the, the guy, the, 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 the apostle, the, the planter of the church, the guy who sort of set it in motion, who brought the original message. Um, and I think we need to connect with that because this the way it was that they'd been taught the right things but pride and and humanity and um uh, you know poor motive and and all of that had crept in and he's trying to address these things which is really interesting uh turn with me to chapter three we're at, we're at chapter three uh, and I'm going to read a little bit we'll read through and we'll probably try and uh, try and get through chapter three um it's really cool, but it's it's quite confronting at the same time. Starts off with, uh, brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, oh, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you are not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, you, among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? Now this is, uh, this is, wow, you know, this is <laughs> like a full on, like kind of snap out of it kind of thing. So obviously uh, within the church, there was, jealousy, there was quarreling, there was people fighting for position, people arguing and backstabbing, talking behind one another's back. Um, of course, that wouldn't happen in our church or any churches that we go to. Like, yeah, there'd be never be any disagreements. There'd be never any gossip, would there? There'd never be anybody arguing on the sidelines or, or anything like that, would there now? But the funny thing is, in here, he addresses this directly um, and he talks about how it is so worldly 
for us to get into those kind of behaviors. Now we could go right into the conversation about how we're supposed to address, um, you know, when we have a disagreement, you know, Matthew 18 outlines it very clearly that if somebody slights, does something against us, then we should approach them. Now you can argue, oh, that's just for sinful things and so on and so forth. But really, I think we need to be mature in our communication with one another. And if we have a problem with somebody or a disagreement or something going on, we need to address that directly. Um, Paul is outlining here how immature or how worldly the approach is um, which I think for all of us, we need to think about. Um, and also when we see somebody succeeding, what's our heart response? Think about that for a moment. When you see somebody who's doing well, imagine somebody comes into the church, they're new in the church, um, you know, you don't really know them, they don't really know you, but they come in and then over the course of, uh, you know, three, four, five, six months, they seem to get a real um, connection with lots of other people. They seem to be doing well in church. Maybe they um, get onto the worship team and they do well. Maybe they get onto the welcoming team and they're doing well. And they seem to be getting promoted. Uh, what does that do inside of you? Does that create uh, jealousy or does that create excitement for them? Are you wanting to spur them on or are you wanting to pull them back it's uh it's interesting how the letter to this church is um is the same as a letter that we could write to um, uh, many churches around and, and ours too as well um and this statement are you not acting like mere men like mere people just like not thinking about godly ways just worldly ways uh, real challenging. Anyway, sorry, I, this is going, it's just, we might not get through the whole chapter if I keep going. I just get so excited about this particular letter. In fact, about the Bible in general, but this is cool. So uh, it goes on, verse 4. For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere men? What after all is Apollos? And whom, and through Oi, sorry, what after all is Apollos? What is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow grow. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose and each will be re rewarded according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. Now, this is actually a scripture that I really like. Um, over the years, I've had opportunity to um, to teach a little bit on evangelism um, and encourage people about getting out and sharing the gospel. Um, and this scripture has been very helpful with that. Now, what Paul's getting at in this particular letter uh, is is um, essentially that um, it was seemed that people were looking up to different people as if they had, uh, you know, some special thing going on or whatever. And he's trying to say, no, 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 we're all the same here. Uh, everybody's been given a task. There's no need for jealousy. There's no need for rivalry. There's no need for any of that. Uh, you've been given your task. You've been given your task. You've been given your task. And then to, to you know, um, honor those tasks, do what God has called us to do. We're walking alongside mission field with God himself. And that should be exciting. And I, I really love that picture because it does take a little bit of the sting out or pressure out uh, of us, but a reminder also that it's not about the man that's standing up behind the pulpit. It's not about the uh, the evangelist out on the street. It's not about, we don't follow that, we follow God. They're doing work for God. That is their task assigned to them. The other thing I love about this is that we often will put people into different categories. So, you know, you'll see, I'm sure all of us know somebody who um, seems to have an ability to um, go out and meet people on the street, uh, bring them to church and they get saved, right? Or uh, we, we know people who have 
seem to lead lots of people um, to Jesus. You know, like they're, they're just like, they, that, that's the way they seem to be able to do it. So people respond and they lead people in a salvation prayer or whatever it is. Um, but I'm encouraged by this bit of scripture because it's talking about some people are called to plant the seed. So some people are called, they don't see the person give their heart to Jesus. Some people are called just to plant the seed. Others are called to water it. So not even, you know, they somebody might have already heard about Jesus, um, but they then uh, come along and they reaffirm. So some plant the seed, some water the seed, and then others, they come right at the end. They come at harvest time and they get that, what we call the win, right? They see the fruit, the person who gives a heart to Jesus. Um, but sometimes we miss the fact that there's been people before us who have actually done the hard work. They've been praying for that person. They've been talking to them about Jesus, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and this just tells us and reminds us that we all have our part to play in it. In fact, um, I met with uh, a friend today, um, a, a lovely guy and his wife. and um, We've known each other for a few years now. Um, and um, and they're still exploring their faith. They're still like, you know, we know, like we really sense God is real, but we haven't really dedicated or, or, or put our whole lives into it or given it the time and attention. Um, and as we were chatting um, just about life and work and all of those sorts of things, um, this friend mentioned that he had been catching up with this amazing dude who I know, um, his name's Armand, amazing man of God, a good friend. Um, and, and, um, and they'd been catching up and he'd been encouraged by catching up with Armand. And, um, and it reminded me of this scripture because I was thinking about that. Like I know for certain that Armand would have been praying for, uh, sharing the gospel, encouraging our, our mutual friend uh, around um, a relationship with God and it reminded me that we both have our parts to play in um, in in planting seed in watering and seeing people come to Jesus um, and that there's no no one's better we need it we're, we're all needed you're needed whether you're planting the seed whether you're watering it or whether you're bringing in the fruit you're seeing the harvest uh, it's all as important one can't be done without the other um, so it's quite encouraging. Goes on here. This is really cool. Verse 10. Uh, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder and someone else is building on that foundation. But each one should be careful how he builds. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay or straw, his work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. Do you remember what I said about the light? This is really cool how God just brings it all together. His work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he'll receive his reward. But if it's burned up, he'll suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. So what's this talking about? It's thinking about when we, uh, you know, the, the foundation is Jesus. The effort that we put in, the um, the prayer time, the uh, the life we lead, it's it's all talking about our dedication to Jesus. That we don't need to worry about if the person next to us is doing what they're doing and how they're doing it. We need to make sure that we're giving it our all in our walk with God, not being distracted, uh, not looking at. Um, you know, somebody else's lane, stay in your lane, do what you're called to do, because God has called you to, to do particular things. Um, and remember, um, the, remember this, I don't even need to explain, I, I'm going to read it instead, because this is important. Verse 16, don't you know that, you're, that you yourselves are God's temple, and God's spirit lives in you? 
If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is sacred, and you are that temple. You are, carry, you are carrying the Spirit of God. You are the temple of God. Isn't that a powerful, powerful picture that you are precious, that you're important, that God has a plan for you? In fact, he's going to protect you. He's going to carry you. He's going to put in you what you need, and he's going to give you what you need in every season. goes on a bit of a warning. Do not deceive yourselves. Right? Don't deceive yourselves. If any one of you thinks he is wise by the standards of this age, he should become a fool so that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. So then, no more boasting about men. All things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All are yours and you are of Christ and Christ is of God. Don't you just love that? It's just such an um, amazing, amazing thing. He's saying, don't deceive. We, we can't be deceived. We can't. Um, be deluded in starting to think that we are something more than what we are. Uh, we're actually called by God to put to to do what God's called us to do. You are called with a plan to share the gospel of Jesus, to share the good news. Uh, we talk about the Apostle Paul who planted these churches, who wrote uh, these letters, who's a, a major player, apostolic figure uh, in our faith. Um, and he's saying that you too are called. That it's the power of God in you that calls you. Um, I kind of like that. All things are yours. Whether you're Paul or Apollos or Peter. It doesn't matter. All things are yours. He is in you. He empowers you. So my challenge for you this week is to share your faith with somebody this week. Uh, I know that some people are isolated, but do you know what? We have this amazing thing called the internet. We have social media. We have phones. Uh, you could stand at your letterbox and shout across the road to your neighbor, Hey, brother, do you know Jesus? Have a conversation with somebody because just maybe, just maybe, it is your week to plant the seed in someone's life that somebody else is going to water that will see a great harvest. Or maybe, just maybe, you're going to talk to somebody who somebody else previously in years gone by has planted the seed and it's your turn to water that seed, to see it cultivated so it can take the next step. Or maybe, just maybe, you're going to be positioned for an opportunity to lead somebody to make a decision to give their heart and their life to Jesus. I don't know what the situation might be, but I know that God will bring it around. I know that we don't need to uh, stress ourselves about which position we play because they're all as important as the other. And the other encouraging fact is that it is Christ in you that will give you what you need when, when you need it. Now, I hear some people, yeah, but Aaron, what, what do I say? Like, what if people ask questions? What if they, you know, well, the truth is, if you just answer from your experience, you don't have to uh, know everything. But you know what? The truth is that most people don't care what you know until they know that you care. So the very fact that you show somebody kindness and, and your intention is to uh, support and encourage them, then you'll find they listen a lot more attentively. And we don't have to be theologians in order to uh, try to convince people about Jesus. The foundation is laid. The, 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 the hope is there. It's written on their hearts. Our role is just to um, share what God has done in our lives. So if you're wondering how you can uh, minister the gospel this week, um, just share with your neighbor, a work colleague, a friend, uh, whoever it is, however you can, 
um, just one story, one testimony, uh, one recap of what something that God has done in your life is. Because God just keeps moving time and time and time again. Uh, we see him so powerfully in so many ways. And I think sometimes we forget to share the wins and share what he's doing. And I, for one, uh, want to celebrate all the testimonies and see the miracles, hear about the miracles and see what's happening. If something amazing has happened in your uh, life, in your world this week, if you've got an incredible testimony to share about God's goodness or a miracle or a breakthrough, uh, or maybe you've got a prayer request, something that you want uh, me to partner in prayer with you for, uh, then please email me, uh, admin at championlakes.com.au. I'll say that again, admin at Lakes dot com dot au if you just put into the um, subject heading conversations of faith uh, put in your testimony in there what god has done or your prayer request um, or if you've got a, a book of the bible you'd like us to um, jump to and read about or you have a particular topic you'd like to for us to discuss or um Maybe, maybe you want to, I don't know, maybe it's an interview we could do or something like that. Hey, I want to hear from you, hear your ideas. Um, and if, even if it's just a word of encouragement, let us know if um, these conversations of faith are helpful um, and benefit, beneficial for you um, in your walk with Jesus. Um, because I just want to get alongside you. The church does, our elders, uh, they just love you guys dearly. We pray for you often um, and think so highly of you. So let us know uh, via email how it's going. Um, and if you need anything, please don't hesitate to call the church. Uh, even if it's just you want to chat, you want to have a, have a chat and, um, and a talk, that's okay too. Um, yeah. Hey, let's pray, shall we? I just want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that we could share this time together. Uh, Lord, I thank you that we can do it in a... Uh, a somewhat um, informal sort of casual style setting relational way Lord uh, I do pray that we are all united together uh, back for corporate worship Lord in the sanctuary in the auditorium in the church together but Lord we do know that we can still worship you even when there's distance and we do it still in unity Lord I thank you for this platform that enables us to stay connected to one another and Lord, I pray a blessing over each person who's tuning in, each person who's hearing my words right now, Lord. May uh, they be blessed, Lord, with the authority that you've given me through your word and through your son, Jesus. Lord, I pray a blessing and a supernatural anointing over each person that is in earshot of my voice. Each person who is catching the words that are coming through their phone or their device or their speakers, Lord, may there be a supernatural anointing that washes over them. Lord, if uh, any of um, if anybody needs healing, then Lord, I declare that in Jesus' name. If there's a breakthrough that's required, Lord, I pray that in Jesus' name. Lord, if there's a resource that's required, finances that are needed, uh, 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 anything uh, in any way, shape or form uh, that is um, need anyone who needs a miracle, then Lord, I pray for that miracle right now. Let it be in Jesus' name. And Lord, may there be a sense of comfort, of peace, um, and joy. Lord, may each and every person rejoice in their relationship with you. I'll say it again. May they rejoice in their relationship with you and may there be a cloak of protection, a covering upon them, a supernatural anointing. Lord, may you be glorified, may you be pleased, and may you be uplifted in all that we do this week. And I also pray, Lord, that each person gets an opportunity to share a testimony, share their faith, uh, share with somebody who's yet to know you um, and lead somebody uh, to the next step in their journey with you. And we pray it all in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, guys, uh, thank you again for tuning in to this episode of Conversations of Faith. Um, uh, I will um, continue to to um, 
to connect with you guys on this way. Uh, but I do look forward to seeing you back in church when you can. Again, if you need anything, uh, let us know at the church because we want to help you the best that we can. But have a blessed week. Um, praying that you are doing well, that you are um, loving being close to God. Um, and I continue to pray for you. You are loved dearly. See ya.